Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm Beth from Z-Man Games, and I'm here today with Justin Kempinen and Alexander Ortlaff, and they both worked on the game that we will be playing for you today, and that is World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, a pandemic system board game. Uh, so Justin, do we want to jump right into things, I think? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll give a very, very brief overview of the turn structure, and mostly we're just going to be playing the game. Uh, to give you an idea of how it works and kind of explaining some of the actions that we're taking over time. Uh, so if you're familiar with Pandemic, it is uh, the structure is fairly similar. We're going to start each turn by doing four actions. Every, every one of us is going to be going round and around doing that. After we do our four actions, we're going to be drawing a couple of hero cards, which is going to give us more options for how we handle the threats on the board as well as the objective, the uh, quests. And after that, we're going to spawn additional ghouls. These are going to be our main threat on the board. If we allow too many of them to spread, uh, we are risking losing the game or having more threats and more things pop up. That will be bad for us. Finally, and of course I'll explain this a little bit better once we get uh, further along, we will activate these abominations. These are tougher enemies. They're going to take a little more effort for us to eliminate, and they'll also be moving around and hitting us for damage. Yes, uh, characters in this game have health, and it's something that we'll have to manage as we play. Uh, so, I, as Jaina, will take the first turn. And uh, Jaina Proudmore has two special abilities. One, as a special action, I can teleport, which lets me move four spaces away. I'm going to calculate so my... So you're starting all the way over there. Yes, I'm starting in Valiant's Keep. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one of the other aspects of this game uh, that we have is our player cards don't correspond to the different locations on the board. They have special abilities that allow you to um, to do more during your turns, free actions and the like that let you move faster, hit for more damage, that sort of uh, thing. They also assist with questing, which again we will get to in a second. It's a totally new mechanic to this game. So this has not been seen in any pandemic game before. Questing is the way we win, mm -hmm. and it's... Uh, the cards are very important in questing. Yep. Uh, so I don't think so at all. I'm going to use my travel card to <laughs> move. Uh, it's a free action, which means it doesn't cost me one of my four actions. I move any hero on my space up to two spaces. Well, I'm the only hero on my space right now, so I'm going to move two spaces over to uh, the Wrath Gate. I'm going to say hello to my abomination friend there. Uh, and then I'm immediately going to use my teleport as a first action to move one, two, three, four. So I've used one of my four actions so far. Uh, my second action is I'm going to attack this space. Now attacking involves using dice. Yes, this is a pandemic game that involves dice. Uh, based on the results of the dice, I will deal damage to my space. Conveniently, each of these ghouls has one hit point, so I'm able to defeat them by, uh, by getting just a few successes. Uh, and then afterwards, after I uh, attack them, anything that's left is going to get a chance to attack me back. So I'll just roll dice and see what happens. All right, so great news. I got <laughs> wow. three success results. That's one, two, three damage. All three of those ghouls are gone. Uh, Jane, that's a powerful arc, uh, archmage. Archmage, archmage. Uh, I also have one block result. If there was anything left on this space, it would attack me back, but the block result cancels that. In addition, I also have Frost Armor as Jaina. She, when uh, she fights, gets plus one block, no matter what. So I've got two blocks, nothing is attacking me, except the last thing I'll mention here is that the presence of the Lich King in, in the colored region, he'll move around uh, the board over time throughout the, uh, the course of the game. But the presence of the Lich King in this region makes fighting and questing a little bit more challenging. It's going to add damage every time you fight or quest. So even though there's no ghouls left, He's dealing one damage, but I block it. So that thus far was two actions. I am Crushing going it. to, uh, then I'm going to move two spaces. I'm going to move uh, one space per action, a uh, classic pandemic move to a connected space with a single action. Three, four. I'm going to move to Nax Ramus because my presence there, if somebody else comes by, is going to help us when we decide to quest. And as Beth noted earlier, uh, questing is the way we win the game. How this works is that we have to complete all three of these uh, quests on the board, followed by Ice Crown Citadel, which is uh, face down right now. And if we complete Ice Crown Citadel, we win the game. And there are always three quests in every single game, one for each region, plus Ice Crown. Ice Crown's always there. There are multiple quests contained in the box, so we just set up with these three, but different quests will provide 
different challenges, not only in which things you will need to do on the track to defeat it, but each, each one will also have a different hit value that it'll hit back against you or ability on it. So that keeps the gameplay a little different each time you play. All right, so uh, that was my four actions. I'm going to draw two hero cards. Ooh, I got a Stronghold, one of the new card types. These are a special card type that's played immediately, and it adds a Stronghold to any space without a quest or Stronghold. Uh, I think let's keep it fairly simple for now and place it in Warsong Hold. There's a couple of uh, red spaces over there. Uh, what a Stronghold does is it grants the, uh, what's that called? The flight, flight, flight path. path. Yes, the flight path action. It changed over time, so it's hard to remember sometimes. Um, <laughs> in which any, any player for an action can move directly to that stronghold space. So it's uh, a very important positional advantage when you want to get to different places of the board. Uh, and the second thing is that when we use a heal action, that's another special uh, one of the actions that you can perform to rest. recover health. The rest action, pardon me. We have heal cards. Heal cards, rest actions. <laughs> um, the rest action lets you recover damage. And if you're in a stronghold, you get a little extra recovery off of that. So because each of our characters have a health meter, that is also a new thing to this version of the game. Um, so you do have to manage your health track, and the way that you can do that is either by the rest action, which we just mentioned, or heal cards. And both of those will enable you to regain health, because um, you don't want your character to die, bad things will happen. They do respawn and come back, um, much like they would in a video game, of course, but um, you wanna, wanna try and keep that health up, so that's something you have to manage in this game that is a new, new piece of gameplay content. Next step is we're gonna spawn some ghouls, and that's gonna be based on the position of the Scourge track. Alex, if you would. Yeah, gesture. absolutely. Uh, so Scourge track starting at the bottom has a little number two under it, which means we're going to be flipping two Scourge cards. Uh, they correspond to the different spaces on the board, and we're just gonna place a ghoul on each of those spaces. So I'm gonna flip Alduar. We're gonna get a ghoul on Alduar. And we're going to flip Gundrak. Get a ghoul out there on Gundrak, uh, and that would be it for now. And that's going to keep happening, and we're going to have to deal with that. Yep. Final step is we're going to activate the abominations. Each of the abominations on the board is going to move one space toward the closest hero, and then if they're sharing a space with that hero, they'll hit them for one damage. Uh, so I believe we are, we are equal. Uh, and if there's a tie, we decide which way it goes. So bring them to me. All right. So we're going to move our friend here to Dalaran from the Wrathgate. And that's going to be it. He's not sharing a space with a hero at the moment, so nobody takes any damage. Uh, and then it's on to me, I think. Yes. Yep. Uh, so I've got the same four actions. I think I'm probably going to start just by trying to deal with this abomination. Uh, Tyrion's pretty good at dealing with abominations, so I have a, a special ability, Ashbringer, that when I fight, I can treat those block results as successes instead. So I have better odds of dealing the three damage that we need to remove an abomination from the board. Uh, so I probably start by just doing that and then seeing where we are at that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do one action to move to Dalaran and say hello. <laughs> and my second action is going to be to fight. So I'll roll some dice here. Uh, that's two successes. And I think I'm just going to play this fight one card, which is going to let me add one more success to a fight, which is enough to remove that abomination. So each of the ghouls has one health, but the abominations have three, three. health. And you have to do that all at once. It can't be multiple punches. Yep. It has to be one. So that's why you had to add your fight card. It's worth noting that if someone else had been on my space, they could have added cards to my fight as well. Yep. Uh, and I'll but discard that, that over means there. That and that get that guy out of there. Successfully off the board. So that's two so far. And so now I could just walk to Nuxramus to also get ready for that. I could clear out Frosthold, or uh, my other ability is Press Forward, which as an action I can move another hero up to two spaces. So I could reposition you if you want. Yeah. Um, but you're in an okay spot right now, I think. Or I could throw you to Vault of Archivon and sort of slowly start making my way. Nah, I'm just gonna walk over. You're, uh, you got your own special skills that you can deploy. I, I can handle to fix all that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to join you on Noxramis, uh, and that'll be my four actions. So I'm going to draw some hero cards if you'd be so kind. One, two. Hey, so I have a heal and a defend. I am very sturdy. Uh, and then we'll spawn some fools. One in Agile Naru. 
and one at the Nexus that we will deal with that to eventually. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> so uh, I am playing as Thrall. Uh, in the game, there are a total of seven heroes. Uh, we just went ahead and chose the three we wanted for this game, um, but there are even more exciting heroes to play. Um, Thrall has a couple interesting abilities. So he, with his War Chief ability, is able to contribute to the quest without actually being on the specific quest space. He can just be in that region and help. Um, so if I was able to get over to the purple region, I could help with that quest even if I wasn't on Noxramus. Um, I'm also able to do Chain Lightning, which might be good soon to do. Um, and that'll let me <laughs> fire out some lightning and hit some ghouls. Just seems like it could be advantageous. Or just do some fighting. Maybe I'll do some Chain Lightning? I would say start with the Chain Lightning for that sure. seems good. It might clear up the avalanche or at least diffuse it. That's true. Um, do we want, I guess there's not three connected spaces that I can completely hit, it would just be two. So I get to hit three spaces, but it does have to include the one that I'm on. So War Stronghold doesn't have anything, but I'll try River's Heart. So I'll roll one die and see what I get. That's a good roll. It's an excellent roll. For each success, you get to remove one ghoul. Aha! So you've done your space, you've done this space. Yep, so third one, I will try for the avalanche. I'll take it. Just one, but it does diffuse that from being extra bad. So that was only one action. Um, what is, let's see. So the Nexus is a quest space and I do have one card. Um, that one would punch me for three. Let's try some questing, why not? So two to walk in and then I will quest for my third action. So. That's great. I'm gonna try it. We're gonna start the quest. Um, would we like to explain how questing works? Yeah, probably should. Uh, yes, so questing is another action that you can perform during your turn. Uh, while you are on one of the quest spaces, which is these tokens here, which in this game we have Alduar, Naxxramas, and the Nexus, uh, you will first roll two dice, the U2 dice. Uh, successes will allow you to advance along the quest track. The, your goal is to, over the course of several different actions, to advance all the way to the end of the quest track to complete it. But successes will count towards that, as well as you can contribute cards from your uh, hand. When you contribute a card, you don't have to discard it. It's just kind of encouraging you to hold a different mix of cards and decide whether it's worth using them for the advantages you get in controlling the board, or how much you want to uh, speed along the process of questing. So, there are two ways that you advance the, the position of the token during questing. First, every success result will advance it one, and it will allow you to advance it into any space. In addition, each hero gets to contribute one card, which will allow them to advance the token into a matching space. You also can do those things in any order. So if you have three heroes on the quest space, one person could say, I have a travel, let's move this forward one. Uh, Alex also has a travel. Move it forward again, one. We have one success result. Let's move it forward, one with that. And oh, does Beth have a fight result? Uh, yes, she does. Let's move it forward, one more there. However, Beth is completely <laughs> alone in the space. She's being bold and taking <laughs> on uh, the Nexus by herself. So she has one success result and she I has... I do have one travel. Yep. So in this case, the Nexus does start with travel. So we'll move it down one for travel and then one for my success mm -hmm. on the die. Unfortunately, I can't add any more to it right now on that particular quest action. And then it will punch me for three. Yeah. Um, I did have a block, so it's only gonna do two damage, but that will be tracked here on my health meter. That was only my third action. So I think I might be bold and quest again. <laughs> Yeah, you've got a lot of armor. You, you've fine. still got the proper cards to uh, get as much as you can. Out. Oh, see, hey, that's, that's not bad. That's a much better roll. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so I have a decent blend of cards, so it probably doesn't too much matter how we're metering out these successes, but I do have a travel, so we'll move that forward for the travel, and then I rolled the three successes. One, two, three. Um, it does mean I am getting punched for the full three. That's so what those one, heal cards two, are for. That is what the yep. heal cards are for. Uh, and the hand limit is seven cards, um, just like other pandemic games. Mm -hmm. um, and we are still just flipping two for the scourge. Just two, yep. For Which now. seems fine. Yeah, yeah that's this great. is all great. <laughs> uh, Valiant's Keep. Uh, Which is down at the bottom. And Onslaught Harbor. Uh, Which is up here. 
Okay, so it is my turn. Uh, Alex is going to be shockingly unhelpful with Nax Ramus. Yeah, I'm probably going to pass that first uh, block. I'll still probably just spend some time uh, questing here. There's no real threat spots on the board yet. Yeah. Give it time. Uh, we are also in the Lich King's region, so we we'll oh, need to be a little geez. careful. Okay, well, we'll you be a little careful. Uh, no. I got two successes. <laughs> Uh, I will start by offering a fight to move it forward. One, one and then I will use my two successes. And one, I don't two. have a fight, so that's going to be it for this first that's action. That's going to be it for first action. I'm going to take three damage, two yeah. from the normal Nax Ramus, plus one for the Lich King. And? Uh, to be defended? Yeah. Alex, tell us what you're doing right now. Uh, so I'm going to play a defend card here, uh, which lets me prevent two damage to any hero that's on my space. That's during a fight or during a quest. In this case, I can keep him a little safer for a little while longer. Yeah. I believe Naxxramas does have a quest effect, though. It sure does. Uh, after each quest action, spawn one ghoul on this space. So, going to be a little bit careful, especially because Naxxramas is in the discard pile, but every time we quest, we're going to be adding, uh, adding friends to our space, and we'll have to deal with them eventually. Uh, I am not doing too bad health-wise. I took my damage. I will quest again. That's pretty good on the defense. Uh, it's also worth noting that my frost armor doesn't apply during questing, only fighting. Uh, two successes. Great roll, though. Uh, yeah, that's going to be real good. Uh, I will use my fight. I can use the same card uh, across subsequent actions. I'll use the fight card. I'm going to use uh, my heal. Yeah, there we go. Fight, heal, and then two successes. One, two. All uh, right. Three damage incoming again to block, so I'm actually doing all right. Unfortunately, now we have three ghouls there, and if I were to uh, quest again in this space without dealing with them, another would spawn there, and when the fourth would spawn, you get what's called an overrun. Uh, an overrun places an abomination on the board in that space. And uh, also advances the despair track, which yep. is how we lose the game. Yep. <laughs> so let's not do that. Are you sure? <laughs> you know. All right, uh, I will fight now. As my third action, I will fight. Good roll. Uh, two successes and one lock. I think I'll just let that stand. I could spend a card to eliminate all the ghouls in that space, but I don't want to. Yeah, I'd hang on to it for now. Uh, and I will take one damage from the ghoul and one damage from the Lich King, but I have one plus one from Frost Armor to keep me uh, in ship shape. Final action, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I might as well quest again and yeah, just kind of see. we the travels and defense for it. Yeah. See how far we can get. Uh, that's not a great roll, but we'll persevere. So we both have a travel, which will get us through that block, and then I'll spend my final success to move one more space, and Alex slash uh, Tyrion should be able to get us through the rest of it on yep. his turn, I imagine. You have uh, one damage incoming from uh, the, Lich King. the Lich King plus the quest, which is three minus two, we'll take one. And we get one more ghoul. And, hello. <laughs> now I think I want to quest because it can't go as badly as things could go. Shh, why mm -hmm. <laughs> would you no, say it's, that? It's I'm feeling very confident. Okay. All right, let's see how it goes. See? Great. Perfect. I mean, I'm not blocking any damage at all, but... It's a pretty good success defense. roll. Yeah. Uh, so that will... I have three successes. I have a defend card. You have so, uh, defend or fight. So, yep, I got defend or fight. So you do defend. Yep. Uh, I'll just do defend, and then one, two, three. So actually, we'll finish the quest. Right, so that goes Yay! Away. <laughs> all right. And we get a reward for finishing we the quest. Well, first I'm going to take some damage and we're oh, going to spawn right, a yeah. ghoul. Yeah, yeah. This stuff still applies even when you finish the uh, quest. So I've still got three damage coming at me, which I'm not, like, super psyched about. Uh, probably play a defend card? Yeah, you probably play your defend card. You're going to get some more at the end of the turn. The, so. Well, yeah. I'm also going to want to heal here at some point, but that's probably fine. Yeah, I'll just I think it's worth it. Okay. So uh, you're only taking one? Yeah, well, I guess I'll still heal. Quest effect will still spawn a ghoul. Now it goes away for real. This is no longer a quest space. It's worth noting that you can't use the rest action on a quest space. Uh, but it's not anymore. 
And then I'm going to get this reward card right here ah, yes. for having completed the quest. Uh, and this reward card will feel very familiar to people who have played Pandemic before. Uh, this is One Quiet Night. Uh, so reward cards you can play basically at any time during other players' turn. Um, and it says, this one says, uh, skip the spawn ghouls and activate abominations steps this turn. Uh, which will be really, really useful once this board starts looking particu particularly horrible. Yeah, it's not too bad right now, so I don't think we want to play it yet. But it is a good thing to keep yeah. at the ready. So I could fight here. I'm going to... The Amber Pine Lodge has already gone up, so I'm going to give that a little bit of time. I'm going to let you deal with that. Uh, so I might just heal up and fight. Just try to get rid of this abomination before we get bonked for any more damage. Sure. Seems beneficial. All right, uh, I am gonna heal first though. So I'm gonna play this heal card. It's a free action. Uh, any hero in my space gets to rest and heal at plus one. And so you're choosing it for yourself instead of Jaina. Yes, yeah, that, you know, I, I did a lot of work here. I deserve <laughs> this, it's self care. Uh, so I'm gonna roll these dice for a rest action. I'm going to heal one for each success I rolled. That's two, uh, plus I heal an additional one because of the effect of the heal card. Abominations and ghouls don't affect that. Yep. So I'm going to heal up, feeling a lot better. Uh, I've only done, what, two actions so far? You fought you and fought you quested. You fought and quested. Healed Healing is a, is a free action. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Then I'm going to fight. I didn't learn my lesson the first time, and I'm just going to keep Why would you? All right, that's three successes. I'm still going to be taking a bunch of damage, but it is enough to remove the abomination from the board. Um... I don't think it's worth spending that fight, so I'm going to take one damage from the remaining ghoul, one damage from the Lich King still being there. So we're getting right back down to where I was before, um, but the world's looking a little better. You, yeah. could, you could rest, just a normal rest, if you wanted. I could. Do you want to go somewhere? Because I could also spend my action to move someone up to two spaces, and that's probably uh, pretty good. Probably planning on taking care of Amber Pine Lodge on my turn and then bouncing someplace else. So if you move me there, that'd yeah. be useful. I think that's probably worth it. Spend my last action to give you a jump start on that. Uh, and then I'll be done. I'm going to hang on to one quiet night for when things get really bad. Uh, and let's uh, draw some hero cards. Two, please. They're really good ones. Yeah. Well, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, no. Oh, well, this is not great for No, her. this is fine. We get to learn about how reward cards work pretty much immediately, I suspect. Uh, so the first thing, we're going to advance the Scourge Marker again. Yep. We're going to bottom our, draw. Uh, oh my goodness. Vault, Vault of Archivon. Perfect. There so you go. Lich King's going to move to red. Uh, that's the Avalanche. Vault of Archivon is right here. Oh, yep. Uh, we're going to spawn an Abomination there too. Uh, and then, yeah, we're going to discard that and shuffle the discard and put it back on top. And These three cards. Three cards. <laughs> Perfect. Which we, we are want going to, one to draw. Quiet night? Because think... otherwise we're going to get two more overruns. That yeah, seems I wise. We, I don't think we want that to happen. So yeah, I'd say let's use one quiet night. All right. So we're let's gonna, explain this. That shuffles back up and goes back on top of the deck. That is the end of the draw our draw two hero card step. Uh, we would be going to the spawn ghoul step and the activate abomination steps, but this one quiet night lets me play it to just skip those two steps for this turn. Oh, we chose which... to do that because we moved this up to where we would be drawing three. Our discard was only three, so we knew which three we would draw. And two and of them have three ghouls. Two of those yeah. are very bad. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spend this. I'm going to allow you to save us on your turn. And ah, that one, yes. it's not my fault. This is, I can fix this. Yeah, you got this. Okay. Um, can I fix this? I think so. Um... You've got uh, two travels. I do. I do need to do a little bit of healing in some way because I'm a little low from trying to do the Nexus by myself. Um, what I could do is I could move to Warsong Hold and use my heal card there so I would get the bonus to probably heal full up and then maybe go to yeah. Archivon and fight. You might also consider... Traveling to here and then chain lightning through this. Oh, can we get you there? Get me to Amberpine? Yeah. I don't think so. It's so far away. Because we don't have another stronghold yet. 
One, two, one, two. I mean, we we can depending on where you end up, because you can if you end on my space, you can use my travel too. Oh, that's fair. So yeah, I only have two two travels. Two, two, one, two. Chain lightning. Two, two, move. <laughs> we could spend three travel cards, and you could diffuse, diffuse multiple things. Both. Well, let's do it. <laughs> that probably seems best since this is gonna happen the next time. Yeah. And we'd have to deal with uh, more, lots of more abominations. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. It'll look cool. <laughs> okay, so I have the two travels. Yeah. I think you can start with the thing that you said uh, you initially, right? Move one space. Travel, but, travel. I definitely need to heal. The heal card is a free action. I was just debating if I wanted to be on the stronghold to get the plus one. Get that healing. Should I move to the stronghold and heal or just heal where yeah, I am? Yeah, she, she is going to move, at least have to move one space, right? Yeah, I think so, she needs to move two spaces too. Yeah. Get that full heal. So move one. I will use this heal. Free action. That's a free action. Healing one, two. Plus one, one, two, one heal, three, plus four. one from the stronghold. So I bump back up to six, which is nice. And then we want me to go there so I can chain lightning through that. I think so. Probably. Yeah. So travel. So, travel yep. so my travel two, which is a free action. You've still only done one action. So. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that uh, having a lot of cards <laughs> allows you to do once you quell certain threats as they arise. Yeah, this is the interesting action economy with the cards that is very different yeah. than uh, original pandemic. Okay, so chain lightning. So I will chain first in my space. That's, That's fine. fine. That wasn't the important one. That's fine. Though. I didn't need to worry about that one. Success results uh, or uh, the goals. Yeah, try and do something there. Be I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. It's one. We only needed one. We I only, only needed one. one. Uh, and, and I guess Valiant's key. I was or do you want to go up here? Uh, yeah, I guess River's Heart is fine. Probably. It's probably pretty similar. Yep. Well. Oh, there's a two. Now you're just showboating. Yeah. <laughs> if only that one had been. So <laughs> points. All right. On an arc bond. Okay, so I have done two actions. Um, okay, so if I use my travel again, then I can get to Warm Rest. Still two. Which is free. Yeah. Walk into you for three. Use your travel oh. for Amber Pine. Did we do this wrong? We did this wrong because these are free actions. Ah, uh, of course. Yeah. Mm. 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 Well, well, let it ride. We, uh, yeah. look, we are well equipped to fix that yeah, yeah. later. Yeah. I mean, if you want. To use your travel. That's a free action. I can't do that. He, it has to be during his turn. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So speaking of that questing, yeah. Domination will move one. I will start by questing. All right. One success. <laughs> which is which to is, say, uh, <laughs> which is zero to say no success. Thank you, Alduar. <laughs> uh, but this is why we brought you here. <laughs> I'm helping. I'll use a travel. I'll use a defend. And I will also use a defend. And then we will have no other successes, because uh, I will take two damage. I had one defense, so yep. I'll do one, and then I will That could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, that's true. For a no success roll, that could have gone a lot worse. Well, that's why you got to gather up for these things. Uh, two successes this time. One will be eliminated. Thank you, Mr. Yogg Saran. Uh, use one of your defends. One of what? Or your use defense. defense. Yep, because yeah. I don't have I don't have things that will help further on. I use my defend. I use my fight. Fight. I use a fight. And then one success results. Uh, taking two damage, which isn't great. I, suppose I, can, I think I will actually spend my defend there. It's probably worth it. To block, it. block the damage. Defend, prevent up to two damage. Is this the first time we've done a defend? No, we, I think we've okay. done once before. Never mind. <laughs> now I have nothing to try. I defended you. Uh, so... <laughs> That's right, with the abominations. Uh, so that was two actions. Twice. I will quest one final time. Oh. Final, final Why time. Why would you say that? <laughs> I think it's one final time regardless of anything else. Eh, yeah. That's probably true. I'm not feeling awesome about this. We're not well set up to finish this off. So close. We're very close. I know. Uh, I one heal to move forward. <laughs> 
This goes away. One success to move forward. I have no heal to finish it. He has no heal to finish it. I'm really glad you joined us up here. Yeah. So I will do two damage. Yeah. Only one damage. You have a block. Thank you. Um, I have one action left. One more time. I mean, I guess. Yeah, I might as well. I probably should have stopped there and maybe gone to defuse Cole Ramos or something. I suppose I still could. I've got a ton of... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can move pretty far if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, right now if we draw Scourge Rises, Frostbolt and Cole Ramos are threatened. Yeah. I think I'll do that. I'll spend two of these. <laughs> one, two... You have teleported with your ability. Three, right. four. That's I only have action. one action left, and it costs an action. Oh. Yeah, I'll just pitch all of that for free. And fight in Colramus. All right. Got two successes, two ghouls, one damage coming back. Frost armor blocks it. That's my fourth action. Draw two right. cards. There it is. Good call. All right. So we're going to do all of those things. That scourge marker. Whoop. Get our bottom card. <sighs> hey, Red. More song. Could you chill out? <laughs> song Here, have some friends. That's just, whoops. All the way over there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> hey, Stronghold. Fortunately, they're not going to tear it down. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start by attempting this quest. That is two successes. Uh, heal for me. Heal. You do. You've got defend, so that heal covers all three of us. Heal for you, heal for you, defend for me, and, and then two, two successes. And then, and then the old four damage four coming at me. Which you're probably going to want to spend some defense to block. Yeah. Uh, I don't suppose I can convince you to spend one of your defense. I'm not on the same space as you. not on the same you. space as you. Yeah, he's not, aren't he? If I press this button again, it's going to uh, be a bad time. You can't, I think. I guess I could have. That was one action. I could probably fight regardless. Yeah. The, yeah. The question is, do I take, do I block all four of the damage or just two? <laughs> That's tough. Uh, blaze of glory. Yeah. <laughs> it feels a little early for a blaze of glory, but you could. Yeah, well, the, the penultimate Let's class. Go right down the here. other option would be if you wanted to move. Out and heal at War Song, and then go back in with your travel card. <laughs> it feels so bad. <laughs> it does, yeah. but the other so another consideration is I don't have to finish this on my turn. We can leave true. it for you on your turn. Yep. I could fight here. In fact, I could move you here, and then fight. Oh yeah. And bank on your defense to keep me alive. Hey, that uh, sounds nice. And then I can leave. And not come back here. <laughs> that sounds nice. All right, uh, so I'm going to do that. My second action is going to be to bring you to here. Uh, my third action is going to be to fight here, just to kind of, as a reminder, using press forward, Tyrion's special ability. Yes, my my special skills. Let's fight. Uh, that's three successes. Uh, I do have a damage coming at me. Could you defend <laughs> me, please? <laughs> I will protect you from the Lich King. <laughs> uh. That's basically clear. I'm going to use my last action to leave this cursed place. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to fly my way over to here in yeah. preparation for the future. That sounds nice. Uh, and so just good. really hope an abomination doesn't spawn over there. <laughs> here, we can remove this quest token. Uh, yeah, and that's my four things. So I'm going to get two hero cards, and everything will be just fine. There now you have defense. Who needs help? When you've got all the armor in the world. You've got seven cards as well. Yes. Valiant Ski. Gun Drac. Way over there. And Agile Narube. Right there. And okay. Um, I'm at three health, so it might be beneficial for me to use a heal card before questing, since the heal card will let me heal even on a quest phase. I concur. Okay. I'm going to use one heal cut. Bring this bad boy over here. So I will heal three. Puts me back up to six. That's fine. Okay. For my first action quest, 
Seems good. I don't have any travel cards, but that's probably fine. <laughs> we I say this. as the die will probably betray me. <laughs> oh, we're fine. We're so we're so fine. Okay, so three, cool. three success from there bumps us all the way down to One, the two, that three. fight, and then uh, I, we both have a fight. So. All right. Woo. Do you have four damage coming at you before I we uh, do. complete this thing? Um, but hmm, should I spend my defend or should I just take all the damage? You've got the heals. That's true. Yeah. I'll knock down to two. Because that was only... And we've got Borrowed Time. Uh -huh. Another classic. Yep. So this one, the current player does plus three actions on that turn. Right. And a few and other things are going to happen. Yeah. We finished the final uh, of the three starting quests. So now we unlock Ice Crown Citadel. So we're going to flip this over. Can I grab one of the uh, markers? Uh, <clears throat> obviously, it is a much longer quest than the others. Uh, we're also going to flip this up, uh, and the Lich King is going to be forced back to Ice Crown, where we will need to complete this quest to defeat him. Yep. So that is now a space that we can actually move into on the board, because we will need to go there to actually do the Ice Crown Citadel quest. And he will stay there as well for the rest of the game. Yes. All right, Scourge. So we are still, thankfully, just on drawing three cards. Yep. Mm -hmm. But the bottom card is Urgent Tournament. So the Lich King won't move because we've already unlocked the Ice Crown quest, but we are going to get all this other stuff. We have to do some board cleanup before we start going on Ice Crown, don't we? We are pretty low on ghouls. So yes. purple is going to be the thing. So if we ever run out of ghouls uh, and we need to place more, instead of placing more, we'll advance Despair of the Track. Uh, and if we ever reach the end of that track, we'll lose the game. So we got to keep an eye on how many ghouls we have left. I think any of these start with me fighting here. So I'm going to do that first. Yep. And let's see where we are at that point. So i got to start the chess clock on the, this turn. <laughs> hey. S seven actions plus a whole bunch of free actions. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> that will be great. Uh, so that's two damage, and I'm looking for six, uh, which is not ideal. You have a fight one. I mean, I could just do this, and that then we don't have them. to worry about abominations anymore. It's not ideal, but I'm pretty likely to draw more fights, and you've got a bunch of fights, so let's just do that and not waste any more time here. Yeah. Um, I'm almost... I'm pretty sure my second action is moving you to Ice Crown, right? Unless there's something else you're there's looking to do. a lot of efficiency good. out of that. Um, she can also chain lightning from there. Yeah, I yeah. can chain lightning outside of Ice Crown. <laughs> do we... I don't think we care about Colramas. <laughs> I think, I think that ship has probably sailed. Lost forever. Um, I could just walk onto Ice Crown, or I could like travel my way or borrow time my way to fight here. Because um, I've got uh, two more actions. Do you think it's more beneficial to use borrowed time on my turn and just quest, 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 quest while all three of us are there? It's good. The limiting factor is going to be your health. Your health. True. Um, I do, we do have one heal. Defense, though. Yeah. It's probably good. Yeah, that's probably fine. Then I probably just walk over. Yeah. We hope to fade really bad stuff for a turn. Yeah. I'll walk up, join you, and... uh I've got a little bit of despair to play with here, too. Yeah. You can see how this works out. Because <laughs> that's a normal sentence. Yeah, that's what says. Things we say in board gaming. Uh, can you pass me two hero cards, please? I'd be very happy to. I would oh, like dear. different hero cards, please. <laughs> uh, that, I guess I'm less happy to... Uh, Oblige. All right, well, we're into four now. <sighs> Thunderfall. Thunderfall. Sure. Boop. Could be worse. Not all. Better. Not all <laughs> this is, yeah, this not is not a lot not of cards. Great. So we kind of, yeah, we might lose on on Beth's turn here. Yeah. This is we'll see dicey. how this goes. Um, yeah, that shuffles goes back on top. And then... We've only got three. We're drawing four we're cards. Drawing four oh, cards. <laughs> yeah. It's we're like only three hot three. spots. But... Thunderfall! Oh no! It's not just you! <laughs> hmm. Okay. Huh. So you can um, draw three more of those, huh? No, our... so this is great. And let me tell you why that's great. It's not great. It, that it was bad. <laughs> that was very bad. But look how many goals we have in the supply. <laughs> we're not going to advance for that. The Wrathgate! Are you kidding me? You're not allowed 
touch these that's, cards anymore. That's a game. Yeah, yeah, that's game. So literally that's... the worst cards I could have pulled, I well, did pull. <laughs> so what we'll happens play. here? Uh, we are going to place a fourth goal on the Wrath Gate. We can't because it already has three, so that's going to advance. We would still put an Abomination for that overrun. We don't have any Abominations, so it'll advance one more time. Uh, and unfortunately, <laughs> that is, uh, yeah. That's the end. We were very close. We were probably about one turn off of winning. I think, I think with so. borrowed time, yeah, we could have Between done a good amount of questing. all of the defends that we had access to to prevent <laughs> the damage, the heals, we would have been burning some of the cards we needed to help advance the quest. But if we could manage to get seven quest actions, it's probably enough. Honestly, even six and a uh, uh, chain, chain lightning, lightning yeah. is probably enough to keep us alive there. <laughs> that was the plan. I was going to chain lightning to stop the Wrath Gate. But uh, so this is how this game works. Yeah. And this is how, <laughs> what happens with Pandemic. You think you're doing fine, and then all of a sudden, everything oh, yeah. is terrible. Yeah. Man, it's yeah. been a while since I've lost a game of this. Mm -hmm. Well then, it's good. We, it was this one that we were recording for all of you. Yeah. <laughs> sort of a sort of a crushing defeat there. <laughs> it's worth noting we were playing on the second hardest difficulty. Yeah. Where? Uh, so this could have gotten worse. We uh, did want to challenge ourselves since we had two of the actual game designers on uh, camera here. Uh, so we did bring this on ourselves. Like in other pandemic games, the difficulty can scale here. So, um, Alex, do you want to talk a little bit about how the difficulty for this game works? Yeah, uh, it's it's pretty straightforward. There are essentially four difficulty levels, uh, and the way that they change is the number of Scourge Rises cards that get shuffled into the deck. Um, the highest difficulty has eight of them in the deck. Uh, the difficulty we played is seven, down six, five. Um, and the other thing that happens is as you go higher in difficulty level, you will get access to fewer of these Stronghold cards that get shuffled into the deck. Um, in the uh, two lower difficulties, you have three Stronghold cards. On the difficulty we just played, obviously you have two. Uh, and when you get to the highest difficulty, you only have one Stronghold card, so you really gotta make it count. And then obviously the win mechanic is a little different. We talked about that a bit as we were playing, but, but questing, uh, we didn't quite get to Ice Crown, but mechanically, once Ice Crown is revealed, the quest action is still the same as what we did with the other quests. Um, what was it like actually trying to develop this entire new piece of the game to, you know, fit this new theme, make sure that it felt like a pandemic game, but it was also still something new? Yeah, so one of the things that we, we focused on very, very early was just kind of what it should feel like to play this game. You know, a lot of the, these characters are sort of larger than life and bombastic and the game itself is pretty action packed. So we need to reflect that. Um, and that's sort of where this card play system came from. It's what we sort of in studio referred to as heroic pandemic. We wanted you to be able to just do a lot of stuff and have a really big impact on your turn. Uh, and for that to be fueled by the card play. Uh, and so you saw that sort of as we played, we would have turns where, you know, you'd play four different cards, do your four <laughs> actions, three other free actions, and, you know, whatever else. Um, and so, yeah, we wanted to play into that and really make it so that your turns could be big and explosive and sort of evoke the the combat feel um, that, we're, that the system is based on. Uh, and then we had to figure out how to tie that into, you know, the larger game-winning um, goals. So in base pandemic, obviously you're... You're collecting those specific cards together to, to make melts of, of certain colors uh, and then curing the disease. Uh, in this case, we didn't have the same sort of balance of cards and sort of how they interacted was so different that we wanted to find a way to make holding onto cards valuable, but also not to force you to hold onto your cards to advance the game. We wanted you, now that we've given you all these cool things to do, to be able to play out those cards and do your cool things and not just hang on to them. You still want to use the cards to, like you said, kind of supersize your turn, but you also need to hold on to some because you need them for the quest. And so it's a little bit of a different strategy of card management. And you also don't trade cards like you would in base game pandemic. You know, you actually have to try and trade the cards with the people around you to, to like you said, form the, the collection to find a cure. And that's not a thing you do here. Yeah, and 
the sort of replacement, because we still want it to be a cooperative game, we want players to be collecting in different spaces and, and having to coordinate with each other a little bit more directly, uh, was the fact that you can use most of these effects, I think all of them, uh, on someone else's behalf uh, during the various You're still assisting the other players, yeah, you're still assisting. just in a different yeah. way. So you don't have to trade, but if you're in the same space, you're effectively getting a, a similar uh, ability out of that. And then also for everyone to have to, uh, or it's advantageous for everybody to collect on the quest spaces, to run them together, to contribute the cards that they've gathered over time. Uh, so there's still that sense of, okay, we need to coordinate to make sure that we're going to be where we need to be and uh, assist each other for just like general efficiency. Uh, I always, I think, personally favor when I play spending the cards more because it makes me feel cool. Uh, <laughs> but also because, uh, you know, like, if you can get ahead of the like the threat curve of the game before things start to get out of control, it's kind of how you saw uh, how you saw when we were just burning our cards to to quell some of these issues throughout yeah. the board, having me hop around um, a bunch and trying to <laughs> get debatable. rid of the threat. <laughs> <laughs> One, we lost that game, so it is debatable whether that was the right call, but it's still that a little bit of that uh, decision point of how you, you want to spend versus save some of your cards. Mm -hmm. And eventually you have to spend some of them because you only have a hand limit of seven. So Yeah, yeah there, there is eventually a limit, but until you reach that limit, you get to make those active choices of what is best for, to, for that active turn versus the future. And that's a very different method of thinking than the other pandemic games have. Um, one thing that is similar but also a little different, I think, is the characters. So in Pandemic, every single Pandemic game, there's always a, a variety of characters and they always have unique character abilities. Um, so you know you can pick your favorite one and that's going to play out on the board differently. So we do have a nice variety of characters here, but because of this being our first license game, the character abilities took a slightly different turn trying to make them fit into the lore in the world, right? Yeah, I mean, we, they sort of came from two different sides, I would say, at certain times. You'll have some abilities that are just, you know this is a good ability for the game, it plays well, what character would it fit the best on? Mm -hmm. And then from the other side, you'd have, you know, Thrall is a good example of this. Like, <laughs> Thrall's gonna have Chain Lightning. How do we represent that? Yeah, <laughs> what does that mean yeah. in the game? <laughs> yeah, so it, you sort of come from both sides and the characters ended up with a balance of abilities that are are thematic, essentially either way. Bottom up and top down. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it was a mix of making sure that it fit the story and the character that people will recognize while also still being that each one has a fun, unique gameplay thing that can directly affect how someone's playing. Exactly. Um, and we've got... Seven, seven characters, I think a good mix of Horde and Alliance, mm -hmm. uh, plus Tyrion <laughs> doing yep. his thing. Um, so for you know people who recognize these characters, they can pick their favorite. And of course, we have some really nice sculpts to represent all of them. I think we were all very pleased with how that turned out in the team. Uh, all of these sculpts are new, brand new. They were created for this game. The team worked together to really make sure that they were great representations of each character and the looming threat of the Scourge and the Lich King. So this ends up, hopefully as you can see, has a very nice table presence. Um, what was it like? This is our first licensed pandemic game. So we've, we've had a couple other games that have taken the pandemic system and, and given it a twist. Um, well, first, what is the pandemic system? Let's start there. <laughs> uh, Justin, do you want to speak to what the pandemic system is for those who don't know? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, so pandemic system is what we call uh, any game that is utilizing the mechanisms of a pandemic, uh, but is not using them in a like disease control in the modern era. Uh, well, set aside Iberia in that because it's doing kind of both of those things. Uh, it's using different themes, different worlds, different licenses, uh, and, and mixing that with the very effective cooperative uh, crisis management experience that is the core game of Pandemic. 
Uh, so this includes games like Reign of Cthulhu. It includes the aforementioned Iberia, Rising Tide, Fall of Rome, and now Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, I think that covers it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think at its core, a pandi pandemic system game, it should still feel like a pandemic game. It keeps certain things, like it's always going to be cooperative. There's always going to be characters that have their own unique abilities. The, the way that the threat spreads, I believe that has been consistent throughout because that the mixing of the cards and the way that those go back on top to then spread the threat, that, that stays true each time. But each different pandemic system game has their own little twist. Yeah. yeah. Um, in, in some fashion. And this one, being our first licensed game, let us do some very different and very new twists. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what was it like when, when starting on the first few prototypes thinking about fitting this license into the game? <laughs> well, let me, uh, this was back in, I think, 2017 when this started Many too. moons yes. ago. Yeah. <laughs> Things in product development ebb and flow over time. Uh, Takes a while to make a game. There was a lot of, uh, of trying to figure out exactly what, because we, we, uh, we wanted to work on World of Warcraft with this, and it was trying to figure out the exact right setting for it. Uh, Wrath of the Lich King was always very, very high on my list, uh, it being... Uh, uh, one of the most popular expansions, the culmination of a very, very major storyline in uh, Warcraft that stretches all the way back to uh, Warcraft 3. Uh, and I also actually played this in college uh, way back when in the year of something. <laughs> uh, I will not uh, say any ages. <laughs> um, so that was a big, big draw for me. But we also took a look at, you know, what was currently happening with World of Warcraft, uh, what other possible settings we could have done because there's been lots of different expansions. There's also, we were also looking at uh, whether we could do something with the uh, Vanilla WoW uh, at the time too. And eventually we, we settled, oh, uh, Corrupted Blood was on the list. <laughs> Maybe not super serious, but you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> some, some fans wondered. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, we settled on Wrath of the Lich King, and it just all of the pieces fit really well together. The the ghoul spreading across the map, the abominations as kind of a secondary threat, the looming presence of the Lich King, this same kind of culmination of this big story, and a lot of uh, what we could do with like board and cards and components to create this really like epic feeling uh, game. Yeah, I think it came together very nicely. We're all super pleased with the work that the, the Z-Man team put into this. It took a lot of effort. As we said, uh, it's been in development for a while. Games take quite a bit of time. Yeah. Um, but we're so pleased with how this turned out, and we really hope that everyone else loves it too. We'll have more info about the game, other you know, articles and other looks at it, but uh, it is available to order online and plays one to five players. So there is an included solo mode. And thanks for joining us.